Top three things in my notebook today. Number one, U.S. equity market volume. Hint, there is none. Secondly, Germany. And finally, that 10-year bond yield in the U.S. Treasury market. So first on U.S. equity volume, whether you look at it at the three-month average, and again, we model this uh, both on different durations and across total equity market volume, which includes dark pool volume. Yesterday versus its three-month average, it was down 7%. And get this, versus its year-to-date average, and the year-to-date average, I might add, has been crashing. It was down 35%. So again, if you just look at the 50, 50 the 200-day moving monkey, and you don't look at volume or you don't look at volatility, which, by the way, uh, is still hanging ar around its trend line, i.e. bullish trend for the VIX, then you don't see anything other than just buying higher. So again, watch out for this. There is no liquidity in this market, and when it stops going up, it is going to get ugly in a hurry. Uh, point number two is Germany. So again, they had the central planning day, and as you'll recall, across the multiple quantitative easings of the Fed, as we went into the QE3 and the QE4 and the QE5, you saw more Viagra moments. You had shorter term moments of pleasure, really, for market participants, and then all of a sudden the market just stopped to care. So again, the Europeans are doing what we did, and the European rally really doesn't have any fall through this morning. And what I'm more focused on is the German DAX. The DAX trend line currently is 96.42. So again, it remains bearish trend in as much as the CAC 40 does in France and the Italian MIB index does. So again, if this QE or whatever it is that he's going to say, whatever it takes, can't get you above the trend line, then you got to start putting those European shorts on. What you'll notice in real time alerts is that we have not yet done that. One of the few mistakes I haven't made on the short side, at least in the last couple days. Uh, finally, just looking at the 10-year bond yield, another mistake we have not made here to date is getting off the train on the long bond. The long bond in TLT terms, uh, which is more like a 20-year long bond, is up 16% for the year to date versus the Russell 2000, which is flat year to date. So again, we want to be long, slow growth via anything that looks like a bond or the long bond, and we want you to keep shorting the Russell on the rallies at 55 times trailing earnings for the Russell 2000. And those are your top three things.